It's August 12th, and it's time for another weekly patch update. These are the 2006 wolf leaves, um, some of the newer leaves, really big and in good health. Much better health over on this side of the plant and over on that side of the plant than on the back section um, where we're starting to see some issues with the spider mites and a little patch of powder mildew here and there, but all in all, not too bad. So there's a plant and yeah, we are at the wall. So I think only a couple of vines that I just need to terminate here. Over here, I'm completely terminated. Everything's up against the wall. So took longer than expected, but the full thousand square feet for this plant is completely filled in and bam there is the pumpkin it is six weeks from the way off that i hope to take this pumpkin to it's been gaining over the last 10 days about 23 pounds a day and it's sitting at oh i just looked and now i forget 1200 and something um, and it and it is slowing down. So the last 10 days, 23 pounds a day, but in the last few days, uh, less than that. Um, you know, I have a few kind of little cracks sort of forming on the blossom end that I have to say are scare me a little bit. Um, just because any kind of split on the blossom end is, is game over. Um, so... Hopefully that's gonna be okay. Um, the split on the stem on the other side that I showed you last week uh, is doing just fine. It hasn't grown at all. Um, just starting to get some cantaloping on the, the flesh of the, the pumpkin. Still pretty young and smooth up here, but you can start to see the cantaloping forming, which is where you start getting that texture on the skin had to move the pumpkin a few times probably need to move it again it's getting a bit tight right here starting to sort of kink a little bit here not too bad um, but uh, everything's nice and dry this fans running 24 7 unless I'm taking a video like I am right now and like I said before it's a really pretty pumpkin good shape but you know it's it's not going to be as big as as the 2560 ginger that I got going on the other side, um, but it doesn't need to be. So speaking of that, I'll walk you over and uh, let's go look at the 2560. All right, here is the 2560 plant. It is also completely filled in. So same thing, we got the full thousand square feet here. Um, terminated pretty much everything against the wall except for maybe that guy so these are all terminated here same thing as the 2006 wolf new plant growth looks pretty good curved a couple of the ones that are closest to the pumpkin around here so I'll just you know try and fill in a little bit of space it's not even about really filling the space in so much as just any vine growth that is real close to the pumpkin not you know, way down the main vine. I don't know, I feel like it has the closest direct access to um, feeding the pumpkin, especially late in the year. So we'll see if that theory plays out. These leaves are also looking pretty good, good size um, and pretty good health. And uh, let me uncover this beast. So from this angle here, I'll start here. You can kind of see where the on the blossom end, it's starting to, to roll over the front. Um, you know, the blossom itself is actually touching the pumpkin now, but look at how wide this thing is. And I think that's really where, like I've said before, it uh, it's deceiving because it's not very tall, although it is getting pretty tall. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's all the way off the board on that side. And I'm well onto my five foot board on that side. And then if you actually measure the width of the edges of the pumpkin, I mean, it's 
I haven't done that, but probably getting close to like six feet. I don't know. Um, it's just, it's just totally different than, than the wolf. Like it doesn't have traditional pumpkin shape like the wolf does. Uh, but the stem area, small stem, but everything back here is looking really good. There's no little cracking or anything like that. I mean, this pumpkin's still young. Um, let me, let me check the numbers and then I'll come back with the numbers. Okay, I just looked. Uh, it's nine weeks from today uh, until the Half Moon Bay pumpkin way off, which is where I would like to take this one. No guarantees that that's where it'll end up, but that's kind of the where I penciled it on the calendar. Um, nine weeks just seems like so long to, to keep growing this thing, but um, yeah, well, right now it's going well. We'll just keep our fingers crossed and hope it continues to go well. This thing is 55 days old today. It's been growing 41 pounds a day on average over the last 10 days, a little less in the most recent days, but the 10 day average is 41 pounds a day and it weighs 1,445 pounds right now, uh, which is pretty good. And, you know, it's got the plant, I think, to, to push it. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot, like I mentioned last week, that that I need to be doing right now, other than move the pumpkin if it, you know, starts to push backwards on its vine, which I I think I'm having to do every few days. Keep an eye on the plant, make sure that there isn't a sudden, you know, insect or fungus attack that, uh, you know, doesn't go go checked. Keep your your water and uh, nutrients you know, moving at the, the right pace and, and that's about it. We just kind of just keep monitoring it. So this one, as I've mentioned before, it's, it's definitely the one that has the potential for me to be, you know, bigger. I mean, it's already bigger than anything I've ever grown in its current size. So, uh, it's just want to get it, just want to get to the finish line. All right. I think that'll do it for patch one update or sorry patch two update why don't we cruise over to patch one and i'll show you what's going on over there all right this is patch one the 2266 kissamore is mostly gone um i'll show a picture but this the main vine i found had actually shriveled and and sort of separated itself about here so it was all this healthy plant back here uh but the main vine had had basically closed off and and shriveled and disconnect itself so really probably and I maybe I didn't notice it right away because it looked like it had been that way for a bit so I, I still suspect yellow vine disease and it just had really had a, a, a deep onset of it so really I think the pumpkin has been growing only based on this little bit of vine and, and secondaries that are on this side so I took the rest of the plant out um, I'm I'm sending plant material to two different universities that are doing active research on cucurbit yellow vine disease. Um, I also collected some cucumber beetles and some uh, uh, squash bugs, um, which will be part of the analysis that they do and as part of their study. So it'll be interesting. I'll share any, any updates. As of now, there's no uh, sort of scientifically documented or known uh, connection between the cucumber beetle and uh, cucurbit yellow vine disease, but um, it's suspected. So the, the genetic testing that they'll do would, would, uh, would answer that. All right, so here is the 2245 Andrews, and it weighs over 800 pounds now and grown a little over 20 pounds a day. Um, and there's a little bit of drama here. I've never had stem splits growing before, and I got one for the first time on the wolf, and then I got a bigger one here on the 2245 Andrews. So uh, it's kind of coming into the pumpkin a little bit here. It's really nice and dry, um, but it has grown, and there's one on the bottom. So it kind of, it's like a through hole. Um, as far as I can tell, it's not going into the cavity um, and the pumpkin's still growing. Um, but yeah, doesn't make me particularly comfortable. Um, 
just seeing it. So the fan is on there 24 seven and I got some uh, sulfur powder as a fungicide, you know, in the area. Um, and I'm just gonna monitor it. If it starts to keep, if it really starts to keep growing, I may do a surgery, what folks do to kind of relieve the pressure is actually cut into the vine, into the stem a little bit more. So it takes the, the pressure away from going into the pumpkin. Um, the reason why this is legal is because this goes into the cavity of the stem, but not into the cavity of the pumpkin. But an opening like that can collect water and can rot into the cavity of the pumpkin pretty easily. So um, it's a serious thing to watch closely, but it isn't, uh, you know, catastrophic game over. Um, and again, this one just needs to make it to the, make it to the way off uh, and be legal. I don't need this one to be huge. So, um, and I'm like just letting this one sort of nurse along. If it stays alive with this little tiny bit of plant, um, it continues to be a backup. Um, we'll see if it, uh, if it actually keeps going uh, or not. So yeah, there's not much else to show at this point. That's, that's your patch one update. That thing's getting bright, brighter and brighter orange every day. Um, just got to watch that, that stem split and hope that it, hope that it heals itself and keeps on growing. All right. I think that'll be the end of the, the patch update this week. I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated as I hear back any of the information about the cucurbit vine, uh, yellow vine disease, um, from the universities doing the study. That should be pretty interesting. So here are the samples. I got crown from each of the plants. These things are humongous. And then I have them labeled. Uh, then I have two nodes per section, also from each plant. And then I have in the envelope here, I have squash bugs and cucumber beetles um, to do testing on. So the, this box, and then I have another box over here, is each going to uh, a university who's doing uh, research on uh, cucurbit yellow vine disease.